Welcome to another edition of Points of Interest, brought to you by the Lebanon Area Chamber of Commerce. My name is Paul Boucher. I'm the President and CEO of the Lebanon Area Chamber of Commerce. And as we do each week, present you with the activities, the goings-on in the Upper Valley, and then have special guests to talk about their particular program. And this week being no different, we have some people here from OSHA. We have Lisa King, who is the Program Manager, and Sylvia Paxson, who is the President of OSHA. So before we get to that, though, we'll talk a little bit about the calendar going on in the Upper Valley. Um, we have uh, on Thursday uh, the How and Why in Enfield. Uh, the Shaker Bridge Theater is putting that on, and that is at 7.30 p.m. this coming Thursday. If you want to uh, get tickets or call ahead, uh, the uh, uh, 448-3750 is the number to call. And in White River, the Mountaintop Preview, and that's at the Barrett Center for the Arts. That's the brand new Arts Center, which is just gorgeous. Uh, it's a production of prize-winning play about Martin Luther King. Uh, 802-296-7000 for more information on that event also. And this coming Friday, as we've been doing uh, all uh, winter long, is we have fireworks in Lebanon. And they are running from 8 to 8, 10, 8, 15. The last few Fridays have been excellent displays. Uh, and they shoot those off at Stores Hill Ski Area and uh, here in, uh, um, in Lebanon. So this is coming Friday. For more fireworks. Then we have at uh, um, an open studio at Ava Gallery. And we have some other activities also we'll be talking about. But this one is particular for toddlers. Uh, from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. this coming Friday. Open studio, ages four, 1 to 4 with caregivers uh, to at uh, that particular event. We also have ongoing events. Uh, we have the five college book sale donations are being accepted now. That's been an activity going on for a number of years. Uh, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Saturday. And they are in the co-op food store at 4 Technology Drive in, uh, in Lebanon. And they will accept uh, books that they later will uh, have on sale. And the, all the proceeds go to the uh, um, five colleges in their, for their scholarship accounts. So again, that is uh, from uh, Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., if you have some books in the spring cleaning time, so you may want to clean out some of those old books in your, in your file. Uh, but also, we have another un unique uh, event. Uh, it's Upper Valley Cinderella Project in Lebanon, and that is 5.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, this coming Saturday at Hanover High School, and it's for girls who can choose their, uh, who have actually brought over their uh, prom gowns and shoes, accessories, and and uh, they're looking for donations, and then they'll be giving them out to other uh, gals who uh, want to get uh, all gussied up for their prom coming up here in May. So that is uh, at Lebanon High School this coming Friday from 5.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, other uh, SCORE has got their schedule put together for uh, this coming uh, spring and fall. And uh, so the next one that they have coming up is on... Um, March, April 7th is the next one they've got, and it's QuickBooks, and I took that course just recently, and it was wonderful. I learned a lot more than I thought I knew about the QuickBooks. April 14th, they get uh, the valuation and sale of your business, uh, and beginning uh, this on the 31st of March, and we'll bring these up again next week, uh, building a website with WordPress. All of these uh, workshops are on Thursdays, and they run 6 to 9 p.m. Uh, at the SCORE building. Now, uh, the, their office is upstairs over Citizens Bank. They're up there on the third floor uh, of the bank. And uh, so those events uh, are coming up for them. Also, the uh, Leadership Upper Valley, uh, which is a program the Chamber started, and I can't believe it was 10 years ago that we started that program, um, and then we uh, spun it off to, to Vital Communities, and they've been running the program ever since, and as I say, 10 years. So they're looking for uh, candidates uh, for the class of 217, uh, and it's a great, great program, and the, talking to some of the graduates, 
who said they learned more about the Upper Valley and uh, things that are going on in the Upper Valley, uh, and they're really they were really enthused about the program. And so, uh, um, if you are interested, you can email uh, uh, Stacy at uh, and it goes Stacy at vitalcommunities.org or eight zero two two nine one ninety one hundred extension one zero two. And last year, they actually turned away. We started with uh, nine students, and now they're up to almost 30, and limiting it to that, and they've, they've turned away students in the past because the, uh, uh, the program was full. Um, we also have Johnny Clegg's band is playing at the Lebanon Opera House on March 29th, next Tuesday. And again, that is uh, usually a sellout, uh, so I would suggest uh, you get your tickets early um, for that particular event. We have some other activities uh, going on in April for the kids, particularly Peter Rabbit Tales, and that's going to be running on April 21st, and we'll talk more about those as we get closer to the event. Um, Ava has got a lot going on uh, other than the children's program that I mentioned earlier. They're having a silent auction, and it starts March 6th to April 2nd, so it's going on now, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., and you can visit the uh, museum and uh, look at the items. They're all done by local artists, uh, paintings, sculptures, ceramics, uh, even some uh, metalworking that are just gorgeous. And you can bid uh, on those items, um, and that will close on April 2nd. Um, they also are starting at AVA. Uh, they are spring and summer art classes and uh, workshops. Um, they have 46 offerings this spring and 63 offerings this summer with 53 regional art artists. So these are all local artists uh, in their particular field of endeavor. And uh, so those are uh, going to be going on uh, this uh, spring and all summer. And they're great. And as I say, children, teens, and adults for these workshops. So you want to take advantage of that. And then we have The Haven. The Haven is doing the 216 Mud Ball. Now, that sounds interesting and a lot of fun, mm -hmm. and it's a uh, fundraiser for the Haven. Uh, this is going to be April 2nd um, at the Queechee Inn and Masslands in, over in Queechee, and you can get more information by going to www.mudball.org. And for those of you who missed it, uh, this past uh, weekend was the uh, 38th Annual Home Life Expo that was held at Leverone Fieldhouse. Uh, an event uh, co-sponsored by the Lebanon Chamber and the Clam uh, uh, Hanover Chamber. And we had over 6,000 people, close to 7,000 people that came through there and visited the different uh, 170 different vendors that we had. And it was a great event. Uh, and uh, everybody uh, enjoyed, even the kids had, we had a bouncy castle and then mm -hmm. interactive uh, trains that the kids could do. And we had some uh, beer tasting on Friday night and wine tasting on Saturday night. So it was a great, great event, um, and we. This is almost a year-long project. So uh, anybody who vendors particularly, and so to have uh, uh, close to uh, seven thousand people that come before you, your booth for only five hundred and fifty dollars, it's well worth it. So I would. Uh, it's all, always the third week of March, and so I would put that on your calendar and. We'll be get, sending out uh, invitations to uh, prospective uh, vendors uh, the week of Thanksgiving. Now, I know it's a long way away, but we, we fill up with, uh, uh, with vendors pretty quickly. So that was a great event. And, uh, um, and then, of course, uh, the week before, we celebrated our 100th anniversary uh, celebration, uh, Chamber being uh, 100 years old on February 11th. And we had uh, prior... Uh, board chairs, prior citizens of the year, and prior business of the year uh, at the event. And it was uh, going back to the 60s, past chairs and, and citizens of the year. And uh, we had Steve Taylor, who was the uh, uh, former agriculture commissioner uh, for the state of New Hampshire, who uh, gave us a great history and his relationship with the chamber and the, the chamber in the, and the city and the town before that. So it was a great, great event. So today we invite uh, to our program Lisa King and Sylvia Paxton. Welcome to our program. Thank you very much. Um, 
And we, we talked a little earlier about uh, jobs and job descriptions and things of that nature. And uh, so I'm going to ask Lisa first, how did you come about to uh, uh, OSHA? Well, I started back in 1995 when it was actually Iliad. Um, and I am a local girl from Hanover um, and moved back to the area. And there was a position open. And um, so from 1995 until today, and we um, was Iliad from 1991 until um, a few years ago when we became Osher at Dartmouth. And uh, Sylvia, how you came to the program? I'm sure somebody came knocking on your door and said, we need a president. <laughs> or were you a board member before that? <laughs> um, I moved to the Upper Valley in 2006 and started to take up classes. Oh. And then I joined the curriculum committee, which is the committee that lines up the courses. And from that, I became more involved and was asked to be president. You, you have more history with the organization. As Iliad, how was that started? What was the, the motivation to start that program? Did? I think the motivation was that, um, you know, community members wanted to have lifelong learning. Um, they had approached the college um, and through continuing ed department had approached them, 38 local members, as we call them, founders, that approached the college and working with the college, that's how our program had gotten started back in 1991. Um, and from there, uh, there was records that I found that said, um, you know, our, our goal is within 10 years, if we could have 200 members, we think we'd be doing well. Well, we had 200 members within the first year. Oh, wonderful. Um, you know, and when I started... Uh, Back in 95, we had 600 members, and we're up close to 1,600 members wow. at this point in time. Um, so we work with the college. Um, we are department. We have departmental status. We have a charter oh. with the college, so we're under their umbrella. So we're a department and a 501c3, um, and have um, there's three and a half full-time staff and many volunteers that help run the organization. What was the motivation from going from uh, Iliad to, to OSHA? Well, first of all, you're an old New Englander, I can tell, uh, because you, <laughs> you call it OSHA, yeah. as do I. It's really OSHA. It's not like the OSHA, the oh, health yeah. people. Yeah. Um, Bernard Osher is a philanthropist, okay. and that his name is Bernard Osher, hmm. and he approached us and asked if we would like to become one of his lifelong learning institutes, and at the time, we were involved in a strategic planning process, and we said, look, this just isn't a good time for us, and when we finished that, he came back, his organization came back, and... Um, why did we do it? Because it affiliated us with 118 other lifelong learning wow. groups across the country. Bernard Osher very generously gives his institutes a $2 million endowment. Wow. Now, that endowment goes to Dartmouth, and it's for our benefit. And it is to be used to enhance the experience of our members. So this past year we had a lecture in the fall and we invited a journalist from the New York Times named Anna Mona Hartikolis who had traveled with some of the Syrian refugees from Greece making their way up to uh, Germany. And we had a lecture. Mm -hmm for our members for, you know, as part of what we've done with those funds. Also with the affiliation, <laughs> are you able to also draw from uh, the other uh, institutions to for speakers and that type of thing? I mean, can you share that type of thing? Well, they're all over the country. Yeah. So, so I mean, and there's a large number in California, actually. Oh, okay. Lisa and I were at a lifelong conference this fall. Um, less of that... Okay. Less of speakers, but certainly we share ideas. Um, They're a great resource for okay. organizations that have been part of the OSHA Foundation to, um, you know, work with them and 
ideas about, you know, what do you do uh, to find more instructors? What, oh. you know, how's your relationship with your um, institution, your college? Um, so there are great resources as far as um, sharing ideas, obtaining information for certain projects or events that we're working on that they've been through that necessarily we have not. I see. So that's a, a good in from there. Uh, you now have a permanent facility too also now, right? A, 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 where you hold your classes? Or are you do, are... It's not, well, we rent the DOC house okay. from yeah. Dartmouth okay. and it is not, it's three classrooms. So it's not adequate for all of our members. So we rent all over the all right. over the yeah. Upper Valley, sure, actually. Sure. And you tie up all the traffic in downtown uh, Hanover, <laughs> and nobody has a place to park. Um, we often <laughs> find when we come into which Hanover, is, that's the situation. <laughs> which I think is wonderful. Is <laughs> well, I want you to know that all of our instructors are volunteers. Oh. Um, so no instructor is paid. No Correct. instructor is wow. paid. Okay. Some, we, we do a wonderful summer lecture series. Um, six weeks in the summer. This year it will be New Medical Frontiers. And we do pay for speakers to come in. They're nationally known speakers um, who come in to speak for, for that. But otherwise, all of our courses in here are taught by volunteers. volunteers. Some are prior teachers. Some are not, but they all have a passion for what they for what they well, do. for what they want to do. do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this question I asked with the relationship with OSHA was, uh, you know, if, you had, if they had a particular excellent person in New York City, for example, that because of the endowment you could afford to bring him here and do a, you know, a particular program. But you know, most of it is no, most, most of it is are all local, here. all local uh, or people here. or the our summer lecture series committee. Search, searches not only nationwide, but one of the people they want to bring in this summer is from um, the board of, uh, Doctors Without not Borders. Board. Oh, yes, sure, you know, sure. So they're looking internationally as well. Is that, and yeah. it's, I know of, we have a fellow Rotarian who participated in that program mm -hmm. doing immunization uh, somewhere and then worked on, uh, is it the boat, Hope? I guess yes, was, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. Doctors Without, uh, mm -hmm. without uh, so there are some local people that, that mm -hmm. do that. But we do. You're really looking at your uh, pamphlet, um, your brochure. Uh, really varied from you know the, the, uh, the really interesting programs, and uh, so who sits down and says, well, you know, we need this program, or we've had. I'm sure you're getting some input from your students oh, or your attendees, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, um, what we found is, for the most part, someone comes to us and says. I really want to teach a course on Franklin Roosevelt in World War II. Um, and, and, you know, we're all ears. I mean, you've, you've seen this. Um, we, we've run the gamut from how to buy a good bottle of wine for under $10 <laughs> to Aristotle, you know. Um, my husband recently took a course on the mysteries of the universe and was dealing with all these uh, Einstein theories. I mean, it can be, I, and I, I've had some wonderful courses on Peter, Paul, and Mary and, oh. and, you know, music. So it really runs the gamut. What runs through all of this is it's just wonderful to go to take a course with no papers, no exams, <laughs> and no <laughs> grades. You just... Do it for the love of learning. Yeah, that's wonderful. It is. So yeah. it keeps us young. Yeah, sure. And your your, your pool, if you will, is a lot of the Dartmouth uh, teachers, professors who have retired here. Some, with vast some, knowledge yes. Of things yeah. That, uh, so and they've been wonderful. And um, a lot of our instructors actually are from within our membership, um, from just local area um, folks that may still be working or retired and um, don't necessarily know about our program as far as being as a participant but have become study leaders and a lot of our um, instructors are gained by word of mouth um, you know we look to our members on a evaluation form or follow-up form as we call it at the end of each course we ask right on the form you know what was your experience like and then also do you know of any one that may be interested in teaching, any contact information and what the course subject um, would be or what courses would you like to see offered. And we follow up with those with our curriculum committee 
Um, they're out there recruiting, following up with these names and phone numbers that come in to us as um, part of teaching. And I'm so some people might think, well, I can't commit to a six-week course and you know make sure I'm there every Tuesday. Yours are mostly a one-time uh, event? Oh, they, yes, vary. they They do vary. vary. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they know ahead of time how much time mm-hmm. commitment it does. Tells us right here how, right. Five, how many sessions, what days of the week, and what the hours are. And, and they really do vary. Vary anywhere from two weeks um, to eight weeks, and some classes meet oh. twice a week. And I'll, you know, say the instructor's like, I want to do four sections, but I can only do it in two weeks, so they'll do Tuesday, Thursday. So we really try to accommodate the instructors and their needs because, once again, they're all volunteers, sure, sure. so we try to work with their schedule. Yeah, uh, I had assumed that they were a one-time lecture and that was it, but they do some have a, a longer uh, period of time. <clears throat> a busier time of year than others? Like, was summertime busier than the fall? Well, spring? that leaves the answer. Okay. <laughs> so um, we currently offer courses in the fall, winter, and the spring. Okay. Um, we have an eight-week term for each of those three um, sessions. Fall is our largest. Okay. Um, we offer 85, uh, between 80 and 85 courses. Um, and winter and spring is between 50 and 55 courses. And wow. ad- again, due to supply and demand, folks are traveling or away in the winter and spring, but um, our fall is our largest. And in the summer, we're actually piloting our first time ever summer term. Wow. Um, this summer, we'll be putting out a catalog soon with 20 to 25 courses. Um, again, all run by volunteers, and also this summer, which we've done since 1997, is our summer um, lecture series, which we run in Spalding Auditorium, um, and that attracts on Wednesdays, which you mentioned earlier about parking. <laughs> um, we run that Wednesday mornings, 9 to 1130, and we attract anywhere from five to 800 people every Wednesday morning for six weeks. You mentioned earlier some of the wine tasting or whatever mm-hmm. it might be. One, when, when the old Lebanon College was uh, here, the, the the most popular course was bartending, <laughs> and we sold that out within you know a week or so. And we had a fellow at uh, the uh, Norwich Inn that taught it right there mm-hmm. at the bar. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we always sold out that particular <laughs> that particular. We talk about membership. How does one uh, join and get all the information and that kind of stuff? You fill out a form. Oh, good. <laughs> you fill out a form, and there is a membership fee. Uh, it's currently $60 to join. Uh, actually, I, I want to just say this right up front. You pay to be a member, and then you pay f- depending on the courses course. that you take. I see. Okay. But when you look at other adult education courses, our courses are very, very reasonable, and we have scholarship opportunities if people need it as well. So they can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and we actually have a website. Um, all the information is there. It's just um, www.osher.dartmouth.edu. Um, and the fees are there, and like Sylvia had mentioned, you need to be a member first. But um, And we're happy. There, our catalogs are online, um, and we also have them in hard copy. We're happy to send those at uh, request. Um, and we also have, every time there's a catalog in the Valley News, there's an insert. Ah. And it, it's not as full as a regular catalog, but it tells you all the different courses that are available. Um, and and it's often we get new members through the you know through people that, have read this that. yeah. So when the semesters they're not staggered. So if you start a, <coughs> like me. now is a spring term, mm-hmm. all your courses start this spring. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then they'll be over on May May eleventh, I believe. But okay. there are varying start dates because of the number be- of sessions. Correct. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Good. Like today is the first day of our spring term. Oh, wonderful! So. And uh, so. Uh, they can commit to a spring, fall, or whatever. And the summer you mentioned, summer. maybe a summer, mm-hmm. a summer one. Cool. Anything unusual uh, that we uh, that might entice some people to join and to? Well, what this, I, I mean, this coming uh, spring or the, well, the spring <laughs> courses are terrific. I, I'm I'm faci- co-facilitating one of them. It's the second time we've run it, and it's called Arts in the Upper Valley, and we go to different art venues around. 
the Upper Valley, and we go behind the scenes, talk with executive directors. So one day we will be at Ava, and in the morning, um, Opera North, Evans Hale will talk with us, and then we break for lunch so we can go to Three Tomatoes oh, or oh, Salt Hill, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we go back in the afternoon and, and uh, Bento will talk to us, and we do that also with um, Hopkins Center and the Hood, Hood Museum, um, Northern Stage and the Center for Cartoon Studies oh. this year, and the Music Center here in Lebanon oh, and yeah. Shaker Bridge. And we, yeah, we do have courses that are still open. <coughs> um, we actually, just before I came here, we had three new members and folks that signed up for courses. So we still do have openings for spring, even though the term officially started today, because like we said, the courses start later, staggered dates. As we do here at the Chamber, are you always looking for directors for your board or volunteers to work, to help out in any way? Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, we're currently looking for members to join curriculum. Um, okay. And we have various, we have several committees. We have curriculum committee, finance committee, we have our, our leadership council. Uh, planning. Planning, study travel. So. Membership services. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, so if anybody's interested, I mean, we, we just reach out. We're happy to put them in touch with uh, our chairs. And I have to say, I've had a long, a long and busy life. And the people that I've worked with up here have just been amazing to me. They, they um, come from varied backgrounds. They're interested, they're committed, they say what they're going to do, and by golly, they do it. They do it, yeah. <laughs> well, just through your experience, as you were mentioning in numbers, your, your membership is what, over 1,600 now? It's about 1,600? Just under 1,600. Just under 1,600 yeah. in, in a short time, that, which means there is a commitment. And mm -hmm. People are interested in something like that to, to do. So yeah. I want to tell you what I usually say to, when I'm speaking to groups. Go right ahead. Those of us who are our age remember going to see The Wizard of Oz when it first came out. Do you remember that it started in black and white when they were in Kansas? And she lands in Oz and it's Technicolor? For me, Osher at Dartmouth has been the Technicolor of my life. Oh, wonderful. Um, and I have done wonderful things in my life. Um, but just the opportunity to take these wonderful courses mm -hmm. and to take them with these students, these fellow students who, I thought of my dad the other day. When, when I was taking, going to high school and college and law school, my dad would say we were, all of us, those students, were wet behind the ears. Mm. We're not wet behind the <laughs> ears anymore, Paul. So you've got people who've had wonderful life experiences. Yeah. And when, you're, when we have discussion, a lot of discussion in class, um, they bring that forward. Yeah. So that yeah. you not only learn from what you're reading and from the, what the instructor brings, but from your fellow from students. students. It's, it's incredible. And I'm sure, too, you're meeting other people that you didn't know before, uh, and some long-lasting friendships, absolutely. I'm sure. Absolutely, absolutely. the program. Yeah. I mean, when we came here, what was almost 10 years ago, yeah. I mean, I, I, I have a brother who lives in Norwich, but I didn't know very many people up here. Yeah. And, and this was an opportunity now this is, to do yes, that. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's great. We're glad to have you here today, uh, Lisa and uh, Sylvia, and uh, we wish you luck. Again, let's uh, uh, website where they can either register or look at the courses. Yes, it's OSHER, which is O S H E R dot Dartmouth dot mm -hmm. edu, um, and we can also be reached by email, which is OSHER at Dartmouth dot edu, or by telephone, uh, which is six zero three six four six zero one five four. Perfect. Very good. Well, thank you again for being with us today. Thank you, thank and you, we're Paul. looking forward to you joining us in your <laughs> retirement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll talk about oh, that. Good. <laughs> good. That's another presentation of uh, Points of Interest, brought to you by the Lebanon Area Chamber of Commerce, and we'll be back next week with another interesting program. Until then.